Hello one and all, welcome back. Tom with Capo Fetish. Today we're going to continue with our unsung album series. I'm going to feature the year 1977, an absolute revolutionary year in rock and roll and music in general. Lots, a lot of stuff going on that year. Punk, disco, pop, rock, you name it, reggae. So uh, without further ado, let's start off with album number one here. A great power pop band, great debut. That is Cheap Trick. This album, uh, of all the Cheap Trick albums I've heard at least, this, there's nothing that comes close to the raw intensity of this record. It's just straight ahead, rock and roll, of course with their pop elements, but the production, it's not super produced like their later records. Starts off with Hot Love, which kind of just starts the album off in fine form for the rest of the album. Goes into a great song by Terry Reid off his second album called Speak Now or Forever Hold Your Peace. They do a really, really fine version of that. You got L.O. Kitties, another favorite of mine off the album, starts off side two, ends with O oh Candy. From start to finish, a really, really great underrated Cheap Trick album that you don't really hear a lot of people talk about. So love this album, Cheap Trick's debut from 77. I love this artist. I think this guy was just amazing. He had an amazing backup band. And uh, I think we lost them about 10, 15 years ago. Just an amazing lyricist and an, a true original, Ian Dury and the Blockheads. New Boots and Panties. Yes, indeedy. Incredible record here. This is a, uh, a CD version with some bonus cuts. So you've got Wake Up and Make Love With Me. Great tune. Great start off song. You've got uh, Sweet Jean Vincent, uh, My Old Man, Clever Trevor. I mean, just one great clever tune after another. Great lyrics. His band is so solid and tight. Like almost like Elvis Costello and the Tractions, that kind of tight, just really super tight. Then you've got the bonus hit on here, Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll, big, big hit. Played all over K-Rock back in the day, back in 77, 78. And then uh, Razzle in My Pockets, another great bonus cut. What a Waste, another great bonus cut. Just uh, amazing talent. And uh, no one really sounds like Ian Dury. He has his own style, his own delivery, and a great lyricist, so... Ian Dury and the Blockheads, New Boots and Panties from 1977. Then when it comes to uh, punk in 77, a lot of uh, accolades are always given to The Clash and Sex Pistols, and right, rightfully so. But I don't think this band ever really gets their true due, and that's The Damned. I love The Damned. They put out some great albums. I think a lot of people don't take them seriously, and they don't really take themselves seriously, and I think that's what's great about The Damned. But on this album, you've got uh, the hit New Rose. Just, I think, the first punk song that hit the charts in the UK, 1976. Starts off with Neat, Neat, Neat. Great tune. A song even Costello covered as a bonus cut off the CD version of, um, what's that album called? Um, this Year's Model. He does a great version of that. You got Fan Club. You got uh, Born to Kill. Feel the Pain. They do a great version of 1970 by the Stooges, a fun house, but on here retitled Feel All Right, I Feel All Right. Yeah, just a great solid, great solid album. Damned are great. And I love their album Strawberries from 1982. I think that is just an absolute masterpiece of an album. So The Damned, Damned, Damned from The Damned from 1977. A great Randy Newman album that hardly anybody talks about, Little Criminals. Really, really cool. It has the uh, controversial hit, Short People. It starts off with that. Songs I've always loved off here, though, is You Can't Fool the Fat Man and Little Criminals. Great, great songs off side one. You've got uh, on side two, Rider in the Rain, I'll Be Home, Baltimore, Kathleen. Just a great album. Great album. It's not like solid as Sail Away, maybe, or 12 songs, but I think it's very, very, very underrated. Randy Newman, Little Criminals from 1977. Another great album is from Pete Townsend and Ronnie Lane, a collaboration called Rough Mix. I was just listening to this the other day. Really great stuff, kind of folky, kind of old-time rock and roll. They kind of change, uh, trade off a little bit, a Ronnie Lane song and a Pete Townsend song. Starts off with My Baby Gives It Away, great Townsend song. Leads right into Nowhere to Run, great Ronnie Lane song. And by the way, Ronnie Lane, what a great songwriter. I mean, if you look at even some of the stuff he did with the faces, like 
off and not as a wink like debris or debre how he says it on the record those are just really great solid tunes and he had great songs throughout the whole faces discography in my opinion so yeah great great album here just a uh, uh, an array of great songwriting great playing you have a lot of uh a-listers on here playing. You got Charlie Watts on a couple cuts. You got Clapton. You've got John Entwistle on here and many, many others. Really, really great album here. Rough Mix by Pete Townsend and Ronnie Lane. I love, love this album. Doesn't get enough love. Um, there was a time where this guy was probably one of my favorite artists, but after the So album, I kind of lost interest. I think he became a little too new agey for me, but this is like one of his greatest, and that is Pete, Peter Gabriel's debut album, also known as the Car Album. You've got, it starts off with Moribund the Burgermeister on side one, which is very, very, it almost sounds like an outtake from uh, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, and a good outtake at that. You got Salisbury Hill, huge hit, still play today. Modern Love, great rocker. There's a lot of, just a lot of great different varied styles on here. You've got Excuse Me, it starts off with like this barbershop quartet. Um, fantastic and then one of his greatest ballads humdrum inside one beautiful beautiful song great production great instrumentation side two you've got uh slow burn which is great too and you've got i'm waiting for the big one great song that's the only little snag on this album for me it just goes on just a little too long they could have maybe cut it in half a tad and then you've got down the dulce vita and then ending with one of his in my opinion one of his greatest greatest ballads uh here Comes the Flood. Ah, oh, what an incredible song. Great, great uh, production and powerful vocals from Gabriel. What an amazing vocalist Peter Gabriel was in his prime. Just amazing. So the Peter Gabriel first album, his debut, is definitely on the list for me. Uh, how about um, how about the how about a little jazz, a little vocal jazz vocal from Michael Frank's Sleeping Gypsy? A lot of great players on here. You got Michael Brecker, you got Larry Carlton, and a lot of A-list jazz players. But what really makes this album is Michael Frank's songs. These songs are just incredibly well written. The lady wants to know. I really hope it's you. Don't be blue. Chain reaction. Down in Brazil. Every there's eight songs on here, and they're all expertly written and just played perfectly with all these great jazz musicians. Really melodic. Tons of hooks. Great stuff. If you've never heard this album, check it out. If you like just low down, just, you know, slow, easygoing jazz, good jazz vocal, check this out. Michael Frank's Sleeping Gypsy. Another great album, I think it's really underrated, uh, from Neil Young is American Stars and Bars. All right, here we go. This album has cuts that were recorded between 1974 and 77, a lot of them appearing on this Chrome Dreams that came out last year that was supposed to be released in 74. Songs that uh, like uh, Will to Love, Star of Bethlehem, Like a Hurricane. Uh, you've got uh, Hold Back the Tears. Songs that would, these songs would later, or would appear on uh, American Stars and Bars, but originally were intended for Chrome Dreams. This is a great reissue, by the way. But back to American Stars and Bars. Just, I don't think there's a bad cut on here. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a hodgepodge, but you've got... Um, of course, Like a Hurricane, one of his great guitar workouts. Uh, the Old Country Waltz is amazing. Saddle Up the Palomino. There's some great like country tinge tunes on here. Hold Back the Tears. I think Nicolette Larson's singing on that song in the background. Bite the Bullet, Homegrown. Yeah, this is a great album. And I think because it's a hodgepodge, it doesn't get the accolades like maybe Comes a Time gets or some of those later 70s Neil Young albums. But uh yeah, great stuff. American Stars and Bars from Neil Young. How about a little jazz fusion from Pat Martino? This is one of my most played jazz albums of all time. I think it was mainly recorded in 76, but released in 77. But um, just there's about six songs on here. All just great, great playing. I think Pat Martino is one of the most underrated jazz guitarists. I saw him once at the Jazz Bakery years and years ago in L.A., such an incredible show. If you've never heard this album and you're a Pat Martino fan, or even if you're not a Pat Martino fan, check this album out. It's just very memorable, but really complex. Just great stuff. Great playing. There's his band, 
Joyous Lake, as they're called. The album's called Joyous Lake. Pat Martino, Joyous Lake. Another great one. People, a lot of people uh, really talk about Iggy Pop's The Idiot Ad Nauseum and also um, Lust for Life. They're great albums, but I like Kill City better. I think this album, recorded in 75, not released till 77, quite possibly is my favorite Iggy Pop album. I love every track on here. It's like this, um, it's like a perfect step away from Raw Power. It's like they, they did Raw Power, and this is just like a great continuation. Um, I, I, I wish James Williamson would have continued with him in this format. You got Kill City starting it off, Sell Your Love, Beyond the Law, I Got Nothing. Joanna is a great rocker. A couple of great instrumentals, or just one instrumental, and there's a reprise. Night, night Theme is fantastic. Great little guitar thing with James Williamson. Constellation Prizes it could have been released as a single. It's so catchy. Rocks. Then you've got No Sense of Crime, Lucky Monkeys. You got this this really cool instrumental that ends the album, Master Charge. Master Charge. I think this is a solid record here. Solid, solid album here from Iggy and James Williamson. Kill City. Then you know I got to throw some kinks in here, right? So I'm going to put Sleepwalker up. A lot of people think, uh, well, I think some people love this album, some people don't, but I think it's their last really solid classic album. Every track is fantastic. Life on the Road, which would be kind of a, uh, a staple in their late 70s sets. Mr. Big Man, the song Sleepwalker, should have been a huge single. Such a great, great song, hit song. Brother, Inside One. Jukebox music featuring Dave Davies, some of his greatest guitar work. Another Dave Davies lead vocal on Sleepless Night. And then it ends with just three incredible songs. Stormy Sky, Beautiful Ballad by Ray, Full Moon, and Life Goes On. Absolute five-star Kinks album here, Sleepwalker. And then how about uh, a great interpreter of song? Great interpreter of many styles. Miss Linda Ronstadt, her album Simple Dreams. I think this is one of her best albums of great cover songs. She does a couple of great Warren Zevon tracks on here. Um, what is it here? We've got Poor, Poor, Pitiful Me. Her version, I, I like it so much. And we've got, um, what is the other one? Carmelita, another great Warren Zevon uh, track. Does a great version of It's So Easy by Buddy Holly. She does, does an amazing version of Tumbling Dice by The Stones. Great, great album here by Linda Ronson. I think this has some of her best interpretations of songs. Another album, too, that doesn't get a lot of attention. I don't know why this album is so um, rated so low, but I, I was just listening to it the other day, and I think it's just fantastic. The Jam second album, This is the Modern World. The title track just kicks ass. I love All Around the World. Just that good, crunchy guitar by um, Paul Weller. And then there's just a lot of great, um, just a lot of great tracks throughout the album. I Need You, London Traffic, Standards. Life from a Window, um, you've got London Girl in the Street today. Yeah, maybe not as good as, say, uh, Sound Effects or Setting Suns, but I think it's pretty, pretty solid. Three quarters solid, so. Those are my picks for Unsung Albums from 1977. Please put yours in the comments section. Please press subscribe. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.